Good morning. Welcome to church. down my life I'm giving up control I'm never looking back I surrender all I'm living for your glory on the earth There's passion in my heart this stirring in my soul to see the nations bow for all the world to know i'm living for your glory on the earth for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for every eye to see for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me for every knee to bow down for every heart to believe for every voice to cry out burn like a fire in me for every tongue to confess you alone are the king you are the hope of the earth oh for every knee to bow down for every heart to believe for every voice to cry out burn like a fire for every tongue to confess you alone are the king you are the hope of the earth for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for every eye to see for the sake of Good morning and welcome. It's good to have you with us this morning at New Life Church Online. Today we'll be continuing with our series, Where Do We Grow From Here? And Peter Dennett will be looking at the church and evangelism today. And there's the scripture which is found in the book of Mark, chapter 16 and verse 15, where Jesus says this and he told them, it says, go into all the world 
and to preach the good news to everyone. And that's what we will be sharing this morning. Shall we now, before as we go into a time of, of praise and worship together, let's just pray before we start. So we just want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity of being found together, worshipping and praising you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you mean to us. And Lord, we just ask that you would really bless us as we come together this morning. For your name's sake. Amen. And just before we do go to worship, just to let you know that later on in the, in the service, we'll be having a time of communion together. So if you want to get your bread and you want to get your juice together so that you'll be able to share communion with us, that would be good. So let's go now and worship the Lord together.
In our series of talks on where do we grow from here, I was particularly impacted by those verses in Acts and chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, where we saw the early church in action. I was so excited. They were devoting themselves to teaching, fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and prayer. They were together, and the Lord added to their number daily. Something significant had happened and that's what we celebrate today. Jesus did it all for us. By our own efforts we can add nothing to what he has done. He died for us on that cross. He died for our sins and the way to the Father was opened wide through his sacrifice. The curtain as it were was torn from top to bottom, from heaven to earth. And through Jesus we can sit at the Father's feet. He enjoys us and we enjoy him. We enjoy that relationship, that special relationship. And Jesus did it all. It doesn't just end there because Jesus is alive and active today. He's working in partnership with you and with me. And as we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit... This is how we experience the truth of those words of Jesus. Behold, I am with you always. This goes well beyond the physical, as it were. It goes into the very heart of who we are, united in spirit with him and each other too. Those who saw how the early church worked together, how they loved and looked after each other, wanted to be part of it. They were attractive. They wanted to be immersed in the love of Jesus and the love one for another. And the body really grew. And there's still more, the future. He's coming back for his bride, the church. That's us, you and me. So let's prepare for communion with him and with each other. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts that there may, may be no blockages between our Father God and us. Search us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit. Let's take time to let him do just that. And so the words of Jesus on the night that he was betrayed. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, his friends, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Then he took a cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it again with you in my Father's kingdom, when I come again. He's coming again. Alleluia. Drink and be glad. And so we pray together, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Thank you for the last door. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came. And Love, Lord. Thank you for the name.
so worthy is the lamb the lamb who gave his life thank you Jesus Amen Good morning uh, the reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 28 um, verses 16 to 20 and it's entitled The Great Commission Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Good morning Church, uh, New Life Church Worthing, it's great to be with you this morning. Um, I'm sure you know me by now but Peter Dennett is my name and I've been asked to share with you this morning. So uh, we're going to be speaking on the topic that the church is going through at the moment, where do we grow from here? And uh, I've been asked to speak about how we can best demonstrate the gospel of Jesus uh, in our environment. So let's pray before we start and just ask the Lord to be with us. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you, you fill us with good things. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights and fills us with light, fills us with life. So I pray, Father, that you will help us to be filled with all that you have for us, that we might honour your name as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed, honoured, be glorified. Let your name be honoured and glorified through us in Jesus' name. 
Help us to be the people that people will see and taste and see that the Lord is good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'd like to come at this from my own particular uh, flavour, if you like. Obviously, I've been uh, I've, I've been spoken of as an evangelist, and I was an evangelist for many, many years, and uh, I still am. I can't help myself. Give me a chance, and I have to share about the gospel. Jesus is my best friend. He's the greatest person I've ever met in my whole life. He's just wonderful. So I I find it very difficult, uh, even in even in settings. But the thing is, I I don't find it difficult. Um, to share the gospel because I feel like I, I've I've come completely comfortable with the beauty that is Jesus. So um, I just like to kind of bring things down to a, a usable space, if you'd like to uh, use that language. Um, so the commission to all of us, I think, and it's great that the church is using where do we grow from here, because I actually believe that we should, as we've already heard, grow, go into all the world and preach the gospel, but grow into all the world and preach the gospel. I believe that the commission to all of us, and it is to all of us, sheep, shepherds, every single one of us, it is a call for us to grow, to demonstrate. And I believe that the transformation, our transformation, is God's plan that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It's the demonstrated gospel, the good news, the good news that Jesus has set me free. He's made me alive. He, and everybody can see that. And God, you know, I believe has made us to be something that people can taste and see. He said, I want you to be salt. I want you to be light. And I want people to taste and see. Why do you think, you know, when we're when it talks about uh, the goodness of God and everything that fills us, it says it's the fruit of the spirit. It's something that people can taste. And we need to be so filled with that spirit. And uh, you've heard me talk before about splosh ministries. I believe that we need to be so filled with the goodness of God, the smoothie of the spirit. And let me tell you, the ingredients is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That smoothie blended together in all of you beautiful people is what you go out with full of the Holy Spirit, bump into people, splosh all over them, and they get covered in love and joy and peace and patience. All of that beautiful Holy Spirit smoothie so i believe that i believe that that's what we are that's the the vessels that god has made us we are cracked pots we you know we've got cracks in us we've got problems we've got woes but even those bring glory to god i glory in my weaknesses because when i am weak he is strong so even in our tough times jesus is manifest and we need to let people taste and see that we're people of a different spirit. That when, you know, when life says we should be angry and bitter, we are forgiving and we're better, not bitter. So there's so many ways that God, I believe, has challenged us to become vessels of his glory and to go grow into all the world so that people will see our good works and praise our Father who is in heaven. We're all called to go. We're all called to grow. And, uh, you know, when we, the Bible is it's funny, actually, this scripture. I've always found it a real challenge because I think actually it's, it's almost a threat. It says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Sorry, I'm, I'm going all gospel on you. And you will be my witnesses. <laughs> it's what the scripture says. It's what Jesus said. And, you know, you can either take that as a oh, brilliant or it's a, ooh, it's a bit of a threat. But I don't want you to be frightened by the commission. The commission is beautiful. And if you allow the gentleness and the beauty of the Holy Spirit, I think that's why the last two fruits are gentleness and self-control. Because when you go out, if you bump into people and you're full, they'll get sploshed. If you aren't full, you'll bump into them. And I think that's why God says, ah, be gentle and be self-controlled because you don't want to just upset them. And, it, you know, I think the challenge a lot of the time, uh, that, there's my, my first C is the commission. My second C is the challenge. And I think the challenge is to slim down. The challenge is to bring it down to the beautiful, tasty message 
of the gospel and to to shed some of the things that we've we've you know a lot of us I've been a Christian 30 something years and you know I think the challenge is always to actually just provide something that people can eat uh, I was trained as a farmer I think I told you but you know we, we're not supposed to give the whole haystack to one cow you know the, the, the problem, they can't they can't eat it uh, and they might make themselves sick and you know when you're talking to people some people just are oh, really really you don't have to explain everything you don't have to give all of your theology what we need to do Paul said go into the world preach Christ and him crucified and the beautiful Christ you know that, that I've said this before but he is so so beautiful and we need to slim down to realize because yeah, I don't know if you know this but fat sheep can't reproduce they can't reproduce you have to slim them down just before you you introduce the ram to the to the herd you have to go through your herd and find out the fat and the slim and there's certain gradings that and if they're they're good and you know they're ready then you, you send them out but if they're too fat you have to put them on a lean field if they're too thin you have to fill them up and give them uh, the goodness as it were so i pray that this morning if you're feeling a little thin in your relationship with jesus that god will fill you with all of the beauty and fill you with love and joy and peace and patience and if you're a bit overweight in regards to your theology and everybody you meet you want to give them your your latest kind of thing about i don't know the the world setting and the, the you know how god is dealing in the middle east and all that kind of stuff wonderful great but let's narrow it down to the beauty that is jesus christ and him crucified you know when i was in prison i used to read uh, uh watership down a lovely story but it's you know it, it, we've got to be in love with this story we've got to be in love with this story and you know jesus is way better than bigwig and hazel and fiverr and all of those other characters that whatever your heroes are and by the way actually when my daughter i i, I overheard her once um and you know, it was a bunch of kids and they were all uh, saying you know they got their pterodactyls and and they got their superheroes and they got superman and and all these different models and they said to Sarah, Sarah didn't have any of those, but they said to Sarah, who, who, who is your superhero? And she said, my daddy's my hero. <laughs> and I, she didn't know that I was in the kitchen preparing a cup of tea like every good pastor does. But um, it just swelled my heart. You want to swell God's heart? I'll tell you what, if you want blessing in your life, you go out there and tell them how beautiful your father is, how wonderful your father is. Because my daughter at that moment could have had anything she wanted. And I, I, I just feel like God wants us to go into the world and, and spread the glory and the beauty of who he is and what he is. We're not called to preach churchianity. We're, pray, we're called to preach christianity christianity and that beautiful christ he is so beautiful you know wherever your theological stand comes from it's uh, you know i believe that we're called to demonstrate the beauty and the love of god so that people will catch it because you can't help who you fall in love with and they need to fall in love with jesus you can't help who you fall in love with that's why the gospel of jesus christ is the power of god unto salvation Shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> if you go out and you tell them the beautiful love of god how he's laid down his life he's given everything for them he's desperate for them he's so filled with passion for them but you know they could be filled oh who's that statement i love it that they could be filled where, you know, with with a, a great affection that their heart could be could be filled, and uh, you know we need to go out with a good message, a message of God's goodness. Because yeah, and here's my last C, and I'm finishing now. The compassion. You know, when we go out, I went out as I was an evangelist for many many years, and went as a missionary, and I went on the basis that I got saved in prison, and thank God He'd set me free, and I went on thankfulness. That was wonderful, and I went into you know loads of countries, and I preached the gospel, and that was tremendous. But I had this thing in the back of my mind because I was brought up in a Pentecostal. Well, I wasn't brought up in a Pentecostal church, but I became a Christian 
and went to a Pentecostal church and I loved some of the, you know, the, the fire breathing preaching that I got there. It was wonderful. But I did have in the back of my mind this image of I got to snatch everybody from the flames and I was terrified and out there, you know, I got to go and save them from hell. You know what? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. He said, actually, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, in my father's house, many rooms. If it were not so, I'd have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Philip said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know? The whole Thomas said, sorry, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. And you know, one of the most powerful scriptures, I believe, is this particular scripture. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So we come to the Father. You know, we come through the Son. Thank God for the Son. He's shed his blood. He's given his life. He was smashed to a tree at Calvary. He took every punishment, every sin upon himself that I might be free. But now, through his sacrifice, through him, we now filled with the Holy Spirit, born again of the Spirit of God, have access to the Father. And we come to the Father who says in, in, in himself, there is no judgment. Judgment has been done in the Son. The Father judges no man, the scripture says. And we need to come with that same attitude. You heard me in my videos before say that my favourite scripture when I was in prison, I read John 3, 17. John 3, 16, wonderful. God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved and Jesus demonstrated that time and time again by not judging those who the world judged when the prostitute was thrown down before him so that they could stone her he challenged the crowd to say who's who is without sin you cast the first stone and then he said to the lady he said where are they who condemn she said nowhere he said neither do I condemn we're not here to condemn we're not here to have a go at the world. We're not here to be watch dogs and bark at everything. We're here to be watchmen on the walls. We're here to bring the light and the beauty and the wonder of the gospel. We're here to go into the world with the, the taste of heaven all over us. I believe that I just come back, well, I've just come back from Wales and I was there to scatter my mum's ashes on the beach. I told you that she passed away last year. Uh, and um, actually this year. And uh, it was it was tough. And uh, we, we went down onto Porthcawl Beach, her favourite place, Rest Bay. And um, you know, we scattered her ashes and I just, we sang and we wept and it was beautiful. But uh, I, I just have to tell you, she was, not only my hero, just because of the way she lived and how she lived and got through so much stuff, but there was never a more zealous evangelist than my mum. There was never a fuller <laughs> evangelist than my mum. She was crazy for Jesus and I loved it about her. Sometimes I thought she just was off the wall and crazy out there. I couldn't, I couldn't, she used to stand on the streets and preach and she was amazing, but you know, just incredible. And I used to get phone calls. You know, I turned up at her house once and the postman was on his knees giving his life to Jesus. People just couldn't meet my mum without her telling them about Jesus. She was so filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that all of us can get that same filling, so full 
I used to get calls, phone calls, because she had this kind of principle. She went to the same uh, college that I did, and there's this principle that when you lead somebody to the Lord, you get them to confess with their mouth Jesus is Lord. So I used to get these phone calls at random times of the day from people crying their eyes out saying, I just want to tell you that I've given my life to Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful. I pray that God will fill me with that same zeal that my mother had and will fill you with that same zeal, that we can overflow to the point where people taste and see that the Lord is good. So are you full? How's your smoothie doing? Are you full this morning? Are you growing into all the world? Is the transformation evident in your life? See, it's our, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Not, a, not my testimony that I once got saved in a prison uh, and, you know, God did amazing things 30 years ago. My testimony right now that God is challenging me to, to, to become more gentle. God is challenging me to become more open, more embracing, to be bigger hearted. To reach, to reach down as far down as he went and to, to love like he loved. So I'm just asking you if you will join me on this journey. Every single one of us are on it. From, from pastors, to, it's not just the evangelists, it's every single one of us is called to grow into all the world and preach the gospel, that demonstrated gospel. And I pray that we will be filled. Are you full of the Holy Spirit? going to pray in a minute you know, I, you know just open your heart are you are you full and uh, and spilling over and bearing fruit are you ready to give a reason for the hope that is in you are you slim enough down in your understanding of what the gospel is it's good news you know <laughs> it's not bad news it's good news that's why it's called the gospel good news is your heart in tune with the father's heart See, it's not just that people are facing hell and condemnation. The father is desperate for his lost children. He's desperate for them. If you're a lost child right now and you're hearing me, then please, please open your heart and know the father's embrace. Let your heart be full of love. He loves you. He adores you. Let your heart be full of the Father's compassion that we're out there looking for his lost children. He loves every single one. God so loved the world. Are you full and done with judgments? Then let's grow into all the world and preach the gospel. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you for such a beautiful message. We thank you, Lord, that, the, that the, the message of Jesus is the most wonderful story, the greatest story ever told. It's the most amazing story, but it's not a story. It's reality. It is truth. You came into the world to demonstrate the glory of the kingdom. You came into the world to die for all mankind. You came into the world to rise again from the dead, overcoming death, making a way, blazing a trail that we might follow after you. You came into the world so that we can then respond to you, so that we can then rise with you, so that our hearts can be caught up with you, so that then we can be filled with you. That we can be a demonstration that people can taste and see that the Lord is good. That the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Because they see your church full to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. So Father, fill us with all the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the kindness, and the goodness, and the faithfulness, and the gentleness, and the self-control, 
so that we can demonstrate, so that we can love people, we can embrace people, and people will know that our God is good. They will see our good works and praise our Father who is in heaven. God bless you all. Amen.
Well, we've come to the end of our service for today. Thank you so much for joining with us. Hope you've enjoyed being with us together as we worship and praised the Lord. Well, there's some changes happening. From next Sunday, that's Sunday the 22nd of August, at 10.30 we'll be meeting together again, but this time we'll be meeting face to face, something that we haven't done for quite some time. And we've got a new meeting place. We're meeting in Oak Grove College, just inside the grounds of Durrington School. Please come along, please join with us. It'd be lovely to be able to put some faces to the names that we've seen coming on screen every week, and you are more than welcome to come and join with us. So we'll see you, hopefully, next Sunday, 10.30, Oak Grove College. And now we're gonna have a time of fellowship together. We're gonna have tea and coffee. We're gonna have our coffee time, but this is the last one that we're gonna have. Uh, we've been having them now for going on for 18 months.